Have you ever wondered what makes bodies tick? Are you creating the sexual reality you desire and require? Would you like to know more about what else is possible with bodies? What if your fantasies are not as strange as you thought they were? What if you could learn to be kinder to your body and kinder to others' bodies? Would you like to create confidence in the bedroom and beyond? How has your sex life or lack of it affected other areas of your life? Have you lost your mojo and wondered where to find it? Everyone has the potency to be a sexual superhero. Get ready to listen, sense, and play with the sexualness that is you. Now, here is the host of The Pleasure Zone, Body Whisperer, Melitza Yelenich. Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Pleasure Zone. I'm your host, Melitza Yelenich. Uh, for those of you who are brand new to uh, A to Zen, and if you're brand new to this particular show, uh, you might hear a few things on the sh- on this particular show tonight and on shows generally on A to Zen uh, from Access Consciousness that are called the Clearing Statement. So if we say a bunch of stuff that kind of confuses you, just check out uh, the website, theclearingstatement.com, um, to get more information on what we're actually talking about half the time on this show. So what I like to talk about on this show is a lot of stuff that has to do with out-of-the-box approaches to how to start to actually have more um, fun, joy, and pleasure in your life. So being the pleasure zone, you know, a lot of this actually has to do with um, bodies, copulation, and sex, and all kinds of things that are yummy and delicious for bodies. One of the uh, things that kind of inspired this show is that um, I was speaking with friends over a year ago, and somebody had noticed that like I seem to have this ease with talking about bodies and sexuality and sex and all things like that, um, and kind of encouraged me to uh, to kind of step up and start to actually talk about things because a lot of people aren't willing to talk about them. And and today on my show I have um, a guest who's also willing to talk about things that other people aren't usually willing to talk about. Uh, so my guest today is Juna Guter. And Juna has, I've known Juna for a few years. Um, Juna has been practicing body, different types of body work for over 25 years, um, doing things like dance and conscious embodiment, personal empowerment. She's done all kinds of stuff like reflexology, psychotherapy, social work, NLP, uh, Landmark, if you've ever heard of that, because I have and I almost entered Landmark at one point. Naya, EFT, and of course, Access Consciousness. I don't, well, maybe not of course, because not all my guests are Access Consciousness um, people, but a lot of them are. So um, just, uh, we seem to have this language about us that allows you to kind of perceive things in a completely different way um, than a lot of the world is um, talking about these days. So um, our conversation today comes, you know, from a place of, from knowledge, from experience, from awareness, from all of those things. Juna is a really dynamic force, with, especially with bodies and her skills and kindness with bodies is um, really something like I got to witness last year in a body class that she ended up having the opportunity to step in and facilitate out of the blue. So that was quite cool (laughs) that I'd actually been like crossing my fingers to get to go to a Juna class, and then all of a sudden, Juna got to facilitate this class that I was at, um, and there was, she wasn't originally the facilitator, so it was really kind of cool. Um, so, Juna, I'd love to welcome you to the show tonight, and so welcome to the Pleasure Zone. It's your first time being on with me. Thank you. It's so cool to be here, <laughs> and I loved everything that I heard like at the beginning, and the music, and you know everything that you're about on this show is so cool. Awesome. So um, we have a really cool title tonight that you came up with, The 69 Shades of Natural Beauty. It's it's really kind of interesting to me. It's actually been like bugging me all day in a way that's been like, what does that mean? What are we really talking about? Like, what is this? <laughs> and I usually have so much information. Um, like, I'll do research. I'll like, and I'm like, I have nothing. <laughs> this is so fly by the seat of my pants. Some of my shows are very fly by the seat of my pants, but even when I have yeah. guests, I can like go into like their information and and on this one I got nothing, which is really kind of exciting and at the same time I'm like, wow. Mm-hmm. So I like would love to ask you like what is this 69 shades of natural beauty to you? <laughs> awesome. Um 
Yeah, I I was pondering that too, and I think it kind of came up in a joint conversation that we were having, and that title just popped up. And uh, so for me, I, I've been I've been asking lots of questions too since we kind of came up with that, and I knew a radio show was coming up. Um, and I'm like, what like what is beauty and what is natural beauty? And then looking at the beauty standards that we have, like which is really determined by culture, family, society. You know, what's beautiful for one person is very, could be considered ugly or unbeautiful for someone else. So it's this huge, um, it's really a huge topic. Um, And as I was just perceiving the energy of beauty and asking lots of questions, I kind of got, and I just, I wanted to throw this out to you and see, you know, have have you play play back with me on this? Is beauty is is like perceiving? It's like the wind; it's here and then it's gone. And um, you know, we even have a saying in our culture, you know, beauty is fleeting. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I mean is like, and it's like when you try to capture beauty, or you know, people try to preserve it or define it, then it starts to show us the the unside of it <laughs> of mm-hmm. itself like the unbeauty like whenever it, it, it tries to be whenever we try to trap it and say oh that's so beautiful like oh that flower is so gorgeous or that person's face is absolutely stunning and then we like we we preserve it we hold it and we hold it to them and if you've ever been on the receiving end of that cuz you know Melissa I you know, consider you a very beautiful, you know, natural beauty. And it's like when someone, like, puts that on you, like, oh, you're so beautiful, and then, you know, you look in the mirror and go, okay, so what exactly are they seeing? And then you think that you have to freeze yourself in that beautiful moment in order for them to like you ever again. Does that make sense? It does. So it's kind of like, um, yeah, for some other way of maybe wording is like validating their beauty and then all of a sudden you've capped it like that's your beauty and yeah yeah, and so and as people receiving that we're wanting to recreate it so that we can always be seen as beautiful instead of that like possible ever-changing thing that can like energetically shift all the time and be beautiful in different ways all the time Mm -hmm. and that's you know like the energy of perceiving um you know, it, what we learn with in access consciousness, perceiving is like the wind. It's always shifting and changing. And when you try to understand it or try to define what you are, are aware of, it's it, like it locks it in and it's just, it kind of, I don't know, it just, it, it creates something different that nothing else can show up but that. And it just starts to kind of chip away at it. So I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of digging that thing that it's, it's, it's always shifting and changing and you know what you thought was beautiful about something or you know 10 years ago you might not think that's beautiful today or how it's always ever changing i think one of those great examples of that is uh say when i look at pictures when i was a kid you know and had certain style at the time and it was like wow i was so you know at the time you're like wow it's so cool and you look at it and go wow what were we thinking yeah. you know <laughs> and uh, my daughter and I were watching Anna Green Gables one day, and she was saying, wow, did people really have triangle hair? <laughs> it's like, yeah, <laughs> yes, they did. So my mom actually mimicked that the next day and say, she was like, see, grandmothers have triangle hair. <laughs> it's like, whoa, that, that, like our idea of beauty has really changed, and maybe triangle hair isn't so attractive anymore. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a funny thing how um, we even through the ages and even through even within a few years, how our point of view uh, or what we perceive to be beautiful can shift mm-hmm. so much. And you know the question like what is what is natural beauty? That's a great question from someone on the uh, Christine. Mm-hmm. What is natural beauty or what is unnatural beauty? Hmm. Um, and someone else says physical beauty is that natural beauty. Hmm. Um, so yeah, like natural beauty, and I I looked up the word like natural is really it's coming from nature, so it's really no, not from man-made anything, not synthetic anything. It's just it's coming from nature as it is, and I often wonder about that, like 
how many of us have points of view that everything that's natural is beautiful mm-hmm. and then how how much of, the, of that is a limiting point of view just as much as everything that's synthetic is ugly you know like and everything that brings up and everything that is will you destroy and uncreate all those points of views that everything that's beautiful or everything that's natural is beautiful or everything that's synthetic is ugly will you destroy and uncreate all those perceptions and point of views for sure all right wrong good bad all nine pod pog shorts boys and beyond so like what is that is natural and it's not necessarily pretty right so yeah it's, or um, we will kind of go natural beauty, but there's so many things in nature that are kind of like not that pretty or not even that like nice to even be in the presence of, <laughs> but it's natural. <laughs> right. And, and, and like what we do too, like we'll, you know, we'll put on, um, we'll put on makeup or we'll put like black eyelashes or whatever. And it's like, Oh, that's, that can enhance beauty I mean, how much of that is part of our culture's thing with, you know, darker eyelashes? But it is like, so what if, what if there's like this whole spectrum of, um, of beauty that, that if we got out of judgment, we could perceive it as the, you know, the pleasure giving that it, it is for us, and that it can change in every moment. Mm-hmm. Definitely has that. Even um, you had mentioned cross culturally, um, sort when we were just starting the show, and even um, so, how it can change for ourselves, but also cross culturally looking at the beauty. Um, I remember the first time I think I saw uh, the women of this tribal community in Africa that have the rings on their neck, and right now I can't remember the name of them. But yeah, um, Ubangi or something like yeah, that. Yeah. And I was like, and I was like, wow! They to me they look so beautiful, um, in that they were so ornate, and mm-hmm. for them that would be like a natural beauty to them, even though it is like um, a morphing of the body. But for them, that's the most natural way to be. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> and yeah, I just think like the the point of view that we think that natural is greater than anything, you know. And all of all of our standards of beauty, just like what if we can just let go of all of all of the cultural inculcations and incarcerations of beauty that you know these standards that we have to try to achieve, and like we'll never we'll never be able to like that whole thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's almost like a. Yeah, that's that's an intense energy. Those standards that we have to achieve and likely will never achieve. Yeah, I think I have a clearing on that. So and and it's like, yeah, so where have you made someone else's eye for beauty the impossible standard you must always strive for and never achieve? And everything mm. that is will you destroy and uncreate it all. Yes. Right, wrong, good, bad, all nine pod poc shorts, boys and beyond. So someone else's eye for beauty, like Okay, how come that person gets to decide, or that culture gets to decide um, what is beauty for you know a whole bunch of people? And it's the impossible standard, the impossible dream that we can never achieve, but we're supposed to somehow magically think that we're going to get. <laughs> mm-hmm. Crazy. I and I I on my other research today I found that. Um, the beauty industry worldwide is a four hundred billion dollar industry. And that's worldwide. Pretty much makeup, right? Like makeup and aesthetics. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's a massive industry. And the funny thing is there's a lot of the stuff in those things, um, you know, that we're using the makeup and stuff, a lot of it has um I mean, we're taking things from nature to make those. Um mm-hmm. and at the same time there's so many things we're putting in them that that actually could um could could potentially damage our bodies exactly so it's like we're killing ourselves to be so called to beautiful. be beautiful everything that is so we destroy and uncreate all of that where we're killing ourselves to be beautiful yes right wrong good bad all nine pod pod shorts boys and beyond is it worth <laughs> it <laughs> is it really so we're going to head off to break um in about 
three seconds. And when we come back, I'd love for you guys to stick with us here on The Pleasure Zone, and we're going to continue this conversation about the 69 shades of natural beauty. We'll see where everything goes and what we unveil right after these messages. Many of us have created a lot of limitations around sex and what we are willing to choose. Would you be willing to explore what has already been introduced as sexual practices on this planet? What else is possible beyond what we have already seen, heard, or thought of? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual revolution? Taking the taboo out of all aspects of sex, sexuality, and copulation. By tuning into The Pleasure Zone radio show with body whisperer Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Melitza every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on A2Zen.fm. What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? This is The Pleasure Zone with body whisperer Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, please call us in the U.S. Call 815-880-8255-TALK or Canada 613-800-8736. Or you can Skype us at A2Zen.fm. You can also make the choice to ask for comment by email by sending to Melitza at MelitzaYelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Pleasure Zone. I'm your host, Amelia Tsiolanich, and tonight my guest is Juno Guter, and we're talking about the 69 shades of natural beauty. Just before break, we were asking the question uh, about killing yourself for beauty because there's so many cultures in the world that, um, you know, like Juno was saying, like there, it's a $4 billion industry or more. Was it four, $400 billion? $400 billion, That's billion right. dollar industry. 400 billion well, worldwide. That's amazing, yeah. right? And that's uh, you know so so much of it um, is based on judgment, right? Like I'm not exactly. good enough, so I've got to do this to make myself prettier, more acceptable, more interesting, more appealing, more attractive. Yeah. Like all these things, where it's like, holy cow! Like, what if you are beautiful? Mm-hmm. What a concept! What if you're actually <laughs> beautiful? Yeah, and like that's one of my 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 homeworks or home plays is like, go on a hunt and find out what's beautiful about you, and just really look with you know new eyes every day, every moment. And you know, I, I love the question, "Universe, show me something beautiful today." As and then an go invitation. look in the mirror. <laughs> yes, <laughs> go look in the mirror. Look at you know, look at your arms, look at your legs, look at your face, look at all of that. You know. There's just so much beauty in the world. And I remember when I first heard that question, it's like, yeah, to me, everything is beautiful. And you were talking about, like, poop. <laughs> I can find beauty in that. <laughs> I'm sure you could. I, I could, like, justify beauty in it going, well, that poop goes in the garden and turns into flowers. I love it. <laughs> that poop just went into my garden and made potatoes. I love it. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. <laughs> We're crazy, um, but <laughs> we're happy. <laughs> yeah, and there was actually, wa- uh, back in um, geisha times, there were women who actually used pigeon poop for makeup. So poop has actually been used as beauty like beauty products um, historically. Totally. I, 
It, well, I used to. I worked in a beauty shop, and she made um, she made face creams from seagull poop. <laughs> wow. And, That's awesome. Yeah, exactly. But you don't she tell would, people. It's just some kind of protein. <laughs> 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 it's awesome. But I actually yeah, like, knew what we were using. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry, that was just a little humor. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, um, anyways, but yeah, like the judgment and you know the four hundred billion dollar industry really shows you where people are. Um, you know, putting their money into what's what's valuable to them, and what they what they think um, the beauty will get them as well. Like, how much are people trying to be beautiful in order to be loved, to be noticed, to be cherished, and all of that? Yeah, all of that. I've I've noticed that uh, even my daughter at a very young age was picking that up, and so instead of making it like you know, trying to fight it, going, no, 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 just be the natural beauty you be, and oh, no, 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 or, like, not trying to fight it, um, doing the resistance and reaction to make it all wrong. I was just, like, really observing her and, like, her her love of painting her face. And I mentioned to her the other day, um, she got, she, you know, put on lipstick and stuff. She's eight, going to be eight Mm -hmm. soon. She put on lipstick to go uh, to Costco, and I was like, wow, because m- both my mom and I, like, on the most rare occasion, will wear makeup. And so it's kind of neat uh, to watch her, but this is something she actually loves to do. She loves to paint, and she mm-hmm. loves to paint her face. Right. And when she found out that you could actually make a, like, have a career in it, it was like, wow, <laughs> you can have a career in painting faces? This is amazing, right? Cool. So... It's like sometimes we also go to that extreme of making the use of this stuff such a wrongness that it's almost Mm -hmm. like we're fighting it so much that we have to somehow choose it. Yeah, wow. Can you say that again? (laughs) Yeah, we're fighting. Yeah, it's like we fight it so much. It's like we're fighting um, the beauty industry we're fighting like these you know we're trying to be natural but at the same time we're fighting it so much that it's like in order to fight it we actually have to choose it first right yeah so like and and that's that's my point about like what if what if there was no judgment on all of it what if um man-made or synthetic was also a part of the beauty like everything is included yeah so every everywhere that we've been fighting so hard. Oh, that is okay. I you, you're going to have to do that clearing because we're fighting <laughs> it so much that we actually have to choose it first. That's brilliant. Yeah. So I'm not sure what that is, but it's like as if we have in order for us to actually fight anything. Like I I used to say to people who were right. telling me that they were like um, uh, anti not anti the antichrist but they were like uh whatever that word is about like not believing in god or whatever oh, a- atheist. atheist i said but in order yeah. to be an atheist it's like an anti-theist right. you actually have to believe in god to say that you don't believe right. in god to say that you're the opposite of it so in order to like right. fight the beauty industry you actually have to totally like get into agree the with it and, yeah agree with it in order to like align and agree with it, it. it's yeah. like wild right so wow and buy into it in some way enough and feed it enough energy to fight it. So if we weren't mm-hmm. fighting it or buying into it or making it mm-hmm. wrong, then we wouldn't actually be feeding it so much energy to perpetuate that point of view. Mm-hmm. So whatever I was just talking about, if it brought anything <laughs> up for anybody and then you're getting all like frustrated about it and you'd like to change that, we can destroy and uncreate it all the time. Scott Zillian. <laughs> right. Good, bad, fox, bottle, all night, shorts, poison, oh, beyond. Oh, it's brilliant. Yeah, it's, it's like the, um, it, to resist and react to anything, you have to align and agree with it on some level. Otherwise, you wouldn't have to resist it so much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. And, it, okay, so I'm just, I'm jumping around a little bit. Um, back to, like, I, I Googled the word beauty, and, mm-hmm. I mean, you can do it now. It's like I Googled beauty, and then all these women's faces came up. Yeah. And then I Googled natural beauty, and then it's, like, pictures of nature, 
and images of women's faces came up. <laughs> and it was like, there was no men, so men are not allowed to be beautiful in yeah. this particular culture, right? Um, and then I looked up handsome, and there was no women in that on those phases. Interesting, right? <laughs> yeah, so it's like how much of beauty is just, you know, inculcated and, um, you know, entrained by our culture as to, okay, this is what's beautiful. Oh, it's women's faces. They weren't even whole bodies of women. It was all, just the faces. And probably none of them have scars on their face, and none of them have acne, and none of them have wrinkles. Or a few might yeah. have wrinkles, just to prove that wrinkles can be beautiful. Yeah, so <laughs> a, few of that, a few of those were some rebellious pictures, but yeah. I just, I, it just really struck me that um, that's what beauty is in our world. And um, it is really that question of, universe, show me something beautiful today in everything, like what and with like with your own body and with every every body that you look at and everything and even find the things that are sort of nondescript or 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 you might even consider ugly and go okay universe show me something beautiful about this and because beauty is an energy of um yumminess it's it really kind of instigates pleasure mm-hmm. i think for me it's like beauty is there to be enjoyed it's not it's not anything to that I have to define or catch or capture. It is like beauty is there to be enjoyed. And that's like that's the gift that we can give back to the energy of beauty is just enjoying it. I love that. So if beauty is something that we enjoy, what if like every time our body is getting that sense of enjoyment or pleasure, that we actually could acknowledge that we're in the midst of beauty? And kind of go, wow, what is it that's beautiful <laughs> around me? Oh, I'm turned on. What is this? Yeah. Could be even a smell, right? So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, I, I was like, it's not, it's not just what we see with the eyes. It's, um, you know, the, the all, all of the senses and the, again, it's the perceiving. Like, you can perceive the beauty of someone's, you know, the beauty and purity of someone's heart or. Um, you know, where your eight-year-old daughter is coming from, like her, that energy is like there's a beauty there. Can you see it with your physical eyes? No, but do you know it's there, right? Mm-hmm. And that's that, um, when I looked up the word beauty, it's um, it like it engenders like a perceptual experience of pleasure. I thought that was so mm-hmm. beautiful, a, a perceptual nice. experience of pleasure. So, hey, the pleasure zone, beauty... It's a great place for talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. That's so what if what if people define what have you defined as beautiful that is locking you up and limiting you? That if you mm-hmm. didn't define it as beautiful, you would have like more choice, more ease, more possibility, more pleasure with beauty in your world. And everything that brings up, will you destroy and upgrade it all? Yes. Right, wrong, good, bad, all nine, putt, box, shorts, boys and beyonds. And in the same respect, like what have you um, also decided is not beautiful, that if you would actually allow yourself Ah. to see the beauty in it, it could actually allow you to perceive way more, receive way more, and choose Mm. something completely different. Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> and more expansive. So everything that doesn't allow that, let's destroy and uncreate it all. Mm-hmm. Right, 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 right. All my <laughs> shorts, boys and beyond. <laughs> I'm always used to pod pocking for someone else. <laughs> <laughs> I love it because you got a pod pocking team in your house, right? so that's awesome. Mm. That's cool. And yeah, so there's this like very. Um, and it's interesting while we've been on this call i can I can get to where people will just like want to check out when it comes to the discussion of beauty because there's so much of a there's so many points of view about it, and it's like mm-hmm. it's so muddled, and people are even it's like they're trying to even kind of like get where we're coming from maybe when we're speaking or like I want to hear what they're saying, I want to get what they're talking about, so what if you don't actually have to agree with us even? What are you aware of about beauty? that we're not even talking about. Mm-hmm. So I'll let you guys perceive that energy. <laughs> and just what do you know about beauty? <laughs> because mm-hmm. you do know something. 
And <laughs> we're going to be heading into our break right now. Um, so please enjoy our messages as we head off to them right now. Many of us have created a lot of limitations around sex and what we are willing to choose. Would you be willing to explore what has already been introduced as sexual practices on this planet? What else is possible beyond what we have already seen, heard, or thought of? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual revolution? Taking the taboo out of all aspects of sex, sexuality, and copulation. By tuning into The Pleasure Zone radio show with body whisperer Melitza Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Melitza every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on A2Zen.fm. What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? This is The Pleasure Zone with body whisperer Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, please call us in the U.S. Call 815-880-8255-TALK or Canada 613-800-8736. Or you can Skype us at a2zen.fm. You can also make the choice to ask for comment by email by sending to Melitza at melitzayelenich.com. Now back to the program. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to The Pleasure Zone. I'm your host, Amelia Tsayalanich, and tonight my guest is Juna Guter. Uh, Juna is actually a three-day body process facilitator with Access Consciousness, and I and my friend Christine McIver have the pleasure of hosting her in Toronto, May 6th through 8th, and I'm, I'm like, so stoked for this class. Um, <laughs> and I also heard rumor uh, from my buddy Alan Jones in England that <laughs> <laughs> that you will be heading off to England, too. So we were both like, yay, Juna. <laughs> uh, we are having like a secret celebration one day before we were on a call celebrating you, so it was pretty fun. <laughs> and uh, and these, these body classes that Juna facilitates are such an amazing invitation for your body to receive more ease, more joy, more pleasure. And the coolest thing about it is you can be in a room full of people and everybody's getting touched at the same time. And there is um, such an amazing um, um, shift for me um, that shows up in these three-day body classes uh, with regards to my capacities, with regards to receiving um, on so many levels and things I'm probably still not even aware of yet. So I uh, I would love, love, love uh, to have any and all of you come and join us in Toronto we're looking at some of the coolest um, locations. You know, speaking of beauty, um, you know, as I'm looking at locations, there's beauty in spaces as well. And I've been looking at some really cool, interesting, beautiful spaces. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, really like playing with where uh, where this class would like to be, and and the beauty that it would like to be surrounded with, and the beautiful people that would like to come and play with us. Mm-hmm. Um, when we were on break, Juna, I was playing with this idea. Um, so. You know, in lifetimes, like if we have been, say, um, you know, in, in the lifetimes where the Rubenesque body was the the most attractive thing. So we've had that body in other lifetimes. Um, yeah. And, you know, and we might have it in this lifetime or we might have had um, super thin bodies in other lifetimes or we might have had male bodies or whatever it is. But in those lifetimes, we might have actually been the ideal of beauty. And what if we've actually stuck ourselves with 
well, that was the most beautiful thing at that time in that lifetime, and we've carried those points of view to this lifetime. Brilliant. So yeah, I wondered I mean, if we could explore that. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're, you're like frying me. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my show. <laughs> <laughs> Well, exactly. Like, you know, it's like anywhere that you've been judged as beautiful and then you say, oh, well, I'll never be that beautiful again. Um, and, you know, you have to deem yourself to a life of ugly or or vice versa. Like it can go both ways. Um, will you destroy and uncreate all of those lifetimes, dimensions and realities and all the connection points and all of the, yeah, the connections to your immortal soul that keep running that program over and over and over? Mm-hmm. All right, run good battle nine pod puck shorts boys and beyonds. Yeah, like basically any kind of judgment, beautiful or unbeautiful, locks you up. Yeah. Right, you can't you can't get out of it. You can't change it. It really is a cage. And that's I said that kind of at the beginning of the show is, you know, whenever I've had someone say, oh, your hair looks really great today. I mean, this is like when I'm a teenager and I'm like, oh, my God, I have to, I can't leave the house until my hair is exactly like that in order to, you know, go through my day. So that's, you know, teenage years. But but we do that in different ways as we're adults. Yeah, we do. Right? We're, yeah. I know that I there's like um, an outfit I wore at a class one day and I had so many compliments on it. Um, and then, you know, I don't know, something shifted. Either, you know, the clothing shifted or my body shifted, and it's never fit the same way. <laughs> and I'm like, damn it, that was a body. When my body chose that outfit, it was like, it was a nice investment. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so, so I've been asking it to, to, I've been asking the clothes to fit different. I've been asking my body to fit into it. And and there's yeah. been so much judgment around, but it's not the perfect look that everybody was like wowing, you know. <laughs> so, it's, it's like funny. no pressure, <laughs> no no pressure at all. Like I'm 41 and I'm still doing this, right? So it's <laughs> I like how you're saying when I was a teenager, I'm like I must still be a teenager. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are. <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> a teenager of consciousness. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's like, yeah, how many definitions of what's beautiful or what looks good on us or what looks ugly on us keeps us locked up and limited forever? And everything that is, will we destroy and create all the definitions and all the projections and all the expectations of beauty and what looks good and what doesn't look good and how you should show up and how you shouldn't show up? Everything that is, destroy and create it, right, wrong, good, mm-hmm. bad, only, pod, pop, shorts, boys and beyonds. And what is, you know, what's beauty beyond definition? Like, what if we didn't have to define what was beautiful in every moment or what was ugly? Like, what is that that we go through? Is that, is beauty, you know, how much are we making beauty judgeable with that $4 billion industry of makeup? Hugely judgeable. Yeah. And very valuable. I mean, we've invested a lot of money in it. Yeah. But that's like that's what intrigues me is like where you know, what do what do we know about beauty and where have we like bastardized it into like a standard? Mm-hmm. Right? Where like through judgment and standards and structures that just like it just kills the energy of it. You know, the energy of the pleasure of it. And everything that brings up will we destroy and uncreate it all? Totally. Right, wrong, good, bad, all nine, pod, pod, shorts, boys and beyonds. And the standard of beauty, um, as soon as you said that, I thought of Cleopatra, Helen of Troy, and I'm thinking, like, how many um, lifetimes wow. have we actually been the beauty mm-hmm. that, you know, people the have gone to war standard. over, so we refuse wow. to be that. Uh, everything that brings up, we're going to create it all. <laughs> yeah. Right, wrong, good, bad, all nine, pod, pod, shorts, boys and beyonds. And everywhere that we're, we're not allowing our bodies to be the natural beauty in all of its 69 or infinite shades of beauty based on um, the fear of judgment, right, that we'll be too beautiful, too powerful, too strong, mm-hmm. will we destroy and uncreate all that? Yes. 
times a gazillion, right, wrong, good, bad, all nine, pod, pod, shorts, boys and beyonds, or people will die because of your beauty. Mm-hmm. Pock and pod that. Yeah, people will die because you're beautiful, or you'll die because you're beautiful, or, yeah, so it's an, an amazing thing that, to, to me, it's like, I just had some crazy awarenesses on the show, I have to tell you. <laughs> yeah, it's no like, kidding. wow, I'm I'm wondering how many lifetimes, like, uh, am I refusing to actually be as beautiful as I could, uh, could actually possibly be that my body and face would actually choose to be um, yeah. or that I could acknowledge the beauty I'd be and then have that mm-hmm. be seen. Yes. Because it's, you know, set ships to sail and killed people or whatever it's done, set armies on each other. Like, I'm not sure, but there it's an interesting energy. Uh, but, and I yeah. know it's not just mine. <laughs> so. Right. Like, like, is that like a great example of like an implanted, explanted point of view to keep you, um, to keep you low, to keep you at that low level of simmer of, of beauty <laughs> so yeah. that you, you will never become the greatness that you be. Yeah. And For everything sure. that is, you know, being cursed because you're beautiful, or being persecuted because yeah. of your beauty, destroying and create all of that times a godzillion, right, wrong, good, bad, all nine, pod, pod, shorts, boys, and beyond. Whew. Ugh. So, what? Um, oh, is a. What What would it be like for your, for your body to, like, be the, the radiance of your infinite being to embody the the radiance of your being, like in your body. Wow. And every, everywhere that we're bl- blocking that, will we destroy and uncreate it all? Yes. Right, wrong, good, bad, all nine, pop, pop, shorts, boys and beyonds. Hmm. Wow. Mm. I love this call. We're frying each other. How's it going to be better than that? <laughs> There's these moments of silence. I usually don't have moments of silence on the show, and it's like, whoa. No, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm like really, it's like stunned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what would it, what would it be like to embody the radiance of your infinite being? I love this it. This is your act episode. <laughs> <laughs> Just reading the chat room. <laughs> the well, radiance of your infinite being, because there is such a radiance about it, like the energy of truly being the beauty you be, is this, it is undefinable, and it mm-hmm. is an energy that we can perceive, and there's, it's, it's like the infinite colors that shine from that mm-hmm. are literally colors that we don't have words for, I don't think. So and what if we don't have to have words for it? Yeah. It is, and that's that's why, like, as I'm, you know, really in this conversation today, is, it's it's beauty is is like perceiving. It's it's just there in the moment to be enjoyed, and then it moves on and it shifts and it changes into another beauty and then another. And it's that I think maybe that's the brilliance of this title. Now that it's yeah. coming to me, <laughs> like the sixty nine shades, it just goes from one to another to another, and it's always ever moving, ever shifting, ever changing, and it's. You know, it's there to be enjoyed. And hey, if you miss it, it's 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 so quick. You might miss it, and then just yeah. keep being universe. Show me something beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And oh, there's there's just yeah. such an um, there's such a fantastical energy to me about that you chose the number sixty nine with this as well. <laughs> Because I just kept on like I kept on going. Wow, interesting that we chose the number sixty nine for this show. Mm-hmm. Um, and to me, the the beauty too in um, bodies and I mean we've got ten minutes, but <laughs> the beauty's in like bodies and copulation, um, and the beauty that can mm-hmm. be created between people um, yeah. is another energy that's different than the beauty of say you the being, but then the beauty that's created with two beings is is different right too so i I love that you know we threw in you know the 69 number to include uh to me that that was like we're including all things copulation related when we throw that number in there (laughs) exactly 
Which and is, how how much yeah how how beautiful is that? <laughs> yeah, I have no points of view about that at all, whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there there is such an amazing um, beauty of bodies, and and I've I've heard you know people talk about body parts as if they are uh, like repulsive or whatever, and I used to mm-hmm. have a point of view that um, like. My like my genitals were repulsive. I was like, oh my god, how could anybody even want to put their face there? How could anybody want to go there? Mm-hmm. Um, that I had this like so many points of view about it. Um, but uh, you know, there, it's totally different now, and I have a different point of view, and I can like see the beauty. But I could always see the beauty in in say uh, maybe other people's bodies. It was just like mine was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> there's, wow. there's no way. Um, until I actually like could begin to receive the possibility that maybe I'm not vile and disgusting. So even if you could go there for a second, go, what if I'm not actually vile and disgusting? <laughs> like, what so, else is possible? So what made you, what made you change? Like, what, what was, were the, the steps or the tools or was it that question in particular that shifted yeah, that so, for you? No, I was asking my body one day, um, I knew I had a lot of points of view about, um, receiving oral sex so and I thought it was mostly because I had a point of view about um mostly that I had a point of view that women's genitals just must be gross because you know we have our periods and you know there's discharge and there's like I thought there's no way like guys must be lying women must be lying there must be a lie here people are just full of crap um until I actually chose to um to allow myself to receive from a woman, and then it it changed, and I was like, whoa, actually, and to to gift to a woman, and then it changed, and I didn't have, I was like, oh my god, this isn't disgusting at all. I can receive this. Oh my god, and um, there was, and my body was so grateful, and it actually created so much uh, between me and my now lover husband that he was so grateful to the woman that he like wrote her a thank you letter. Aww. <laughs> It was like really sweet. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. So for me, it was like I had to actually be willing to um, receive myself as a woman, um, receive mm. an, through another woman. For me, that's what it was required, and maybe not for everybody, but it did work for me. So yeah, mm. that's cool. I mean, that definitely changed for me too. I had, I think, similar points of views and. It it definitely shifted when I was with a woman, <laughs> but <laughs> hey, everything that brings up and all the conclusions <laughs> that you're all coming to right now, we <laughs> it's destroying not great at all. <laughs> all right, wrong, good, bad, all nine, pod, pod, shorts, boys, and beyonds. But hey, what do we know? <laughs> That's right. What do you know? <laughs> what works for your body, and yeah. you know, for you it might be something different, and you might not have mm-hmm. those judgments. Um, and and I've had um, men say to me before, you know, what if you just got a, a mirror and looked at it? You have no idea how cool it is. I'm like, <laughs> you are just so insane. Yeah. Um, and then there is like there is this whole beautiful thing about, you know, the parts of us that we think are so, you know, the part if we really look at body parts and we think that they're that unattractive, um, and we start to eliminate our points of view about that Mm -hmm. and start Mm -hmm. to receive them, there's this dynamic change that goes across the board. So for me, it didn't just change my love life. It changed my money inflows. It actually changed her money inflows, and she was, like, writing to me after going, oh, my God, my business is flourishing. I'm like, I love it. (laughs) We didn't choose this before for what? (laughs) So it's funny. Like, it can actually create so much. By eliminating well, your points of view, and yeah, the judge, the judgment's not there. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's, it's such a gift. So that natural beauty part to me was like really, truly natural beauty. Um, you know, we have. There's also this thing. Um, it's pretty common, you know, uh, across the board. Um, you know, if you see pictures of naked women pretty much anywhere on the Internet, it's like a natural beauty means a woman has no hair anywhere on her body. 
right. um, other than her, mm-hmm. on her, you know, eyebrows and her head. And mm-hmm. and I thought, well, that's like, well, uh, that can be a choice, but it's also like a limitation too, in a way that it's like that's the only way you can be naturally beautiful. Um, mm-hmm. And there are so many cultures around the world that, you know, women um, say have underarm hair or pubic hair or even leg hair and you know, mm-hmm. there is not an issue with this. So I'd really like you guys in sort of judging your bodies, like, I've got to get this hair off. It's not a, like, ask your body, because maybe your body would really yeah. like the hair. Maybe your body exactly. would like the size of your lips or your boobs or whatever. Just mm-hmm. please ask your bodies. Yeah. I mean, and I used to have uh, women in my dance class say, oh, help me get rid of my stomach. And I'm like, you really <laughs> want to get rid of your stomach? Like, your stomach's pretty cool. Like, it you know, digest your food, and it does all this really cool stuff. Yeah, but it's too big. I want, I don't want it anymore. And, you know, that's just kind of reflective of our whole culture of, like, if it doesn't fit the standard, just cut it off, get rid of it. Um, and, and, I mean, that's like violence, right? It's violence to the body is. is considered beautiful. Yeah. So everything that brings up and all the violence you've done to your body um, in order to make it beautiful by this reality standards where you destroy and uncreate all that. Yes. All right, one good battle, nine pop-up shorts, boys and beyonds. Wow. Um, And just what would it take to see beauty in everything? Absolutely. And, oh, yeah, like that whole, that that sort of definition of beauty of 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 being a, a perceiving of pleasure like i just i'm i'm really enjoying that that is um, such a great <laughs> it's such a great way to look at it because it has no like beauty is uh you know this this look of a woman or this look of a man right. no, beauty is the pleasure that you receive in the presence that you in the presence of whatever it is that's mm-hmm. awesome yeah <sighs> Good times. For the next two and a half minutes, we're just going to sit here and go, oh. <laughs> <Let's> <laughs> out. It's great. It's uh. like, there's so, and there's so many energies. I get this, guys. Like, if you're listening to this show uh, now or in the future, and I get there's a lot of energies that are still, like, around, um, you know, there's lots of things popping for me, um, too. Mm-hmm. So I know this is going to lead to another conversation. And the coolest thing is, is, June is coming back in April to talk more, <laughs> so it's going to be great. And also, you can contact her um, too. So, Juna, if you can just let them know um, how to find you. Um, your I know it, your website's www.synergyinmotion.info. Um, yeah. They can friend you on Facebook, Juna Guter, G-U-E-T-T-E-R. Um, and how else can they find you? Um. That's the best way. I mean, just go to my website, synergyinmotion.info, or Facebook, Juna Guter, G-U-E-T-T-E-R, best way. Yep. Cool. Or, or call Access me. Consciousness, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Access or Consciousness call website. Yeah. And so all her classes are listed on the Access Consciousness website and on the synergyinmotion.info site. So if there are classes uh, you'd like to take with her, uh, Juna's also a CF, so she does a lot of um, the – she facilitates foundation she also facilitates the three-day body classes and there's only like under 12 of you i think in the world that do that class or 10 there's like 14 of us now yeah now okay (laughs) keep changing all the time which is Mm -hmm. cool so there's lots of um classes that you can um be facilitated by by juna um so i invite you and i invite you to come to our class in toronto because the more the merrier. I'm just like so excited to play with so many different bodies as that have already signed up and I'm so grateful for you coming on tonight and having this um super in depth conversation <laughs> and I actually had no idea where this was gonna go, so it's really cool and I'm really grateful for the beauty mm-hmm. talk tonight. Yes. And for everybody listening too. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Awesome. <laughs> Have a great week, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for choosing to listen to The Pleasure Zone. Melissa Yelenich will return next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific 
on A2Zen.fm. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your body.